Welcome back. We are now on to example number three. In example number three, we are going to look at how to add in a clock into our design. So we're going to start a very simple project out that is just going to do a counter. Every time the clock has a rising edge, our counter will increase by one. Okay, so in this example, we are starting off with entity. In this entity, we will have a clock as an input, a reset as an input, and then we're going to have count out as our output. That is a four bit vector. We will need some internal signals into our design. So we're going to make a signal. This signal will have counter reg, which will hold the memory of our counter. And then we'll have counter next, which is going to be used to do our incrementing. We see that we are now introducing a new type of data into our design. We have it as unsigned. What unsigned is, it's going to allow a bit vector to be viewed as an integer, an unsigned integer. This will allow us to use addition into our design. Now, with this unsigned, since it's a new data type, we're going to have to include the information about that data type. You're going to go to the very top, and I already uncommented, but if you read this, it says uncomment the following library declaration of using arithmetic functions with signed and unsigned values. So we're going to uncomment, just delete the two dashes, so that we use IEEE numeric standard dot all. All right, so we come down to our VHDL for this counter. We're going to have a process. On this process, it will execute when we see a change to clock and when we see a change to reset. We're going to have an asynchronous clock. So the first thing we're going to do is check to see if our reset is equal to 1. If it is equal to 1, we're going to set count reg equal to 0. Since it is a vector of 4 bits, we're going to use this code of others assign 0. So that way we don't have to enter every bit as being 0. Another way you could do this is say that count reg is equal to in double quotes. Zero, 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 zero. Then we move on to checking our clock. We have an else if. Recognize the syntax that it's E-L-S-I-F. There is no E and it's one word. If we see a rising edge on the clock, then we're going to have count reg be assigned count next. That is the memory step that we're going to be storing. We scroll down outside of this process because we want this counter to always run outside of a clock being incremented. We're going to say count next is count reg plus one. And then since the output of our entity is count out, we're going to say count out is this is a conversion of unsigned into standard logic vector of count reg. The way this will work is when we start off, we will have want to have a reset be set to one to get our register to zero. When it's zero, count red count next is going to be zero plus one. We'll get a one, and this will not change until we see a rising edge of the clock. When a rising edge occurs, we're going to say register is now equal to one. When that change occurs, this will execute to say next is one plus one will give us our two. So four bits, we should see all the way from zero, 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 zero to one, 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 one. All right, so let's make a test bench so we can see how this will work. Remember our test bench entity is empty. In our architecture section, we're gonna say, I'm gonna have a component. I have this example has a clock, a reset, and a count out. We're going to have a clock, a reset, and a count out as signals. These are the values that we're going to be wanting to view on our test bench. We're going to say a unit under test is example to a port map, clock to clock, reset to reset, count out to count out. 
we'll have a process to set up our clock. We're gonna have that this process runs. We start off at clock equal to zero. We wait 20 nanoseconds. Set our clock equal to one. Wait 20 nanoseconds. And then once we get to this point, this will repeat and continue repeating until our simulation has stopped. The only signal outside of the clock that we need to set is a reset so we can start our counter at a zero. So we're gonna come down, we're gonna do a process begin. We said reset equal to one, we'll wait some time, let's wait 30 nanoseconds, have a reset equal to zero, and then we're gonna have a wait with no nanoseconds. This means that in this process, we will not loop back and keep going to a reset. We set equal to zero, and then we stop changing the value of our reset. Remember that you're gonna to have to make sure that your test bench is set at top, so when you run simulation, it will execute. So we're gonna run the test bench, we'll run simulator, behavioral simulation, and then we'll have our output on this waveform. Let me maximize the waveform as much as I can. We'll zoom it to fit the scale. We see that we have a clock that has a period of 40 nanoseconds, 20 down, 20 high, 20 down, 20 high. We started off with an initial 30 nanoseconds of reset equal to one. We see that our count value is zero. And then we see that our count is incrementing in ones, and this is being shown in hexadecimals. We get zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then when we're at F with all ones, we increment and we go back to being all zeros. So we can see that our synchronous counter is working through this test page. In the next uh, video, we will show how to download to our board, do a modification to slow down our clock so we can see LEDs running. So I'll see you in the next video.